What's good, everybody? What's good? What's good? It's your boy, 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 Cardinal Bud Crawford. And we're back for another one. It's another hot day, y'all. Another hot day. Try to get this quick topic done. Of course, there's another train as soon as I'm ready to ride with this, but we're going to make it work. So what's today's topic? Fact versus fiction. Crawford fanboys can't take the truth. Earl Spence Jr. <laughs> they can't handle the truth, man. They can't handle the truth. When you're a fanboy, if it's one thing you cannot do, it's handle the truth. And I want to hear a few facts, and I want to discuss some fiction that's going on. Now, uh, all right, let's start off with this, because there's one fact I definitely want to hit, I don't want to forget. The same respect Terrence Crawford fans or fanboys want respect for is the same thing Earl Spence Jr. fans want respect for. And that's the fact that he unified titles in a specific division. Now, the Terrence Crawford fans will beat you over the head with the fact he was unified at one, I believe it was either 130 or 140. I think it was 140. Uh, and I think he was undisputed at 140. But what they're forgetting is Earl Spence has done the exact same thing, but in a tougher division against better competition. And he's done it quick, and he's done it the exact same uh, way he said he would do it. So I don't understand why you would attack Earl Spence in one breath and then, and then praise Terrence Crawford in the next breath. Because, like I said, the same thing that you guys want respect for is the same thing that the Earl Spence fans are trying to get respect for and deserve respect for because Earl Spence has done it exactly how he said he would. Now, the one thing I hate about the Terrence Crawford fanboys is the fact that they keep bringing up what Terrence Crawford did in his past weight classes. Now this is the fact versus fiction. The fact of the matter is it doesn't matter what he did at 140 because he's fighting at 147. Like who cares what he did at 140 when you're now in the 147 pound division? Have you have you done anything near or close to what you did at 140 at 147 and the answer to that is completely no it's no 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 not even close and then that that doesn't diminish turns Crawford and what he's done what that does is say he has a lot more to accomplish you know that doesn't mean that he can not accomplish it it means he needs to start accomplishing things otherwise what what your what you're trying to hype up he's not living up to and I'm not saying once again that he can't live up to it I'm saying that you guys are hyping him up more than what he deserves to be now if he was to show and prove if he was to sign that contract, if he was to get in the ring with Earl Spence Jr. and do what he's supposed to do, then there would be no doubt in nobody's mind that me as a boxing analyst, I have to recap what I said, I have to go back, I have to rehash it, I have to rethink what I said, I have to put out new videos and give Terrence Crawford his proper due respect if he was to beat Earl Spence Jr. But if he never gets into the ring with Earl Spence Jr. And his biggest hang up about getting in the ring with Earl Spence Jr. Is the fact he can't get the money he wants. Then we're probably never going to get this fight. We're probably never ever ever going to get this fight. And, and no, no amount of arguing back and forth between fans, no amount of name calling between fans, no amount of finger pointing between fans is going to change the facts of the matter. And the fact of the matter is, the money really shouldn't be Terrence Crawford's hold up. 
it really shouldn't be his hold up even though you know i do kind of understand like you don't want to get beat for a cheaper price his problem is though he's thinking of it in a mindset of well i accomplished all this at 140 i deserve more money because of what i've already accomplished and that's not the facts of the matter the facts of the matter are you're now a 147 pound fighter as a 147 pound fighter, your resume isn't stacked up enough to give you the amount of money that you want. That's point blank and period. Those are facts. That's the truth. Your resume doesn't call for what you're asking to be paid. It just simply doesn't. And I keep telling y'all, Earl Spence is kicked up. Got his feet kicked up, got his head back, he's laughing, having them good belly laughs. And I'm pretty sure he watches some of this stuff on YouTube. It might not be me he's watching, because I know YouTube's not pushing my content to Earl Spencer. <laughs> they barely push it to the almost 10,000 subscribers I got. So I know they're not pushing it to anybody like Earl Spencer Jr. But I'm pretty sure he watches some people's content on YouTube, and he probably just has a good deep belly laugh about all this stuff and he probably he's probably just thinking like man you know the, once i get this guy in the ring i'm just gonna shut all these people up you know because i know for a fact he can't beat me and obviously he's scared to fight me because he won't sign that contract and the amount of money that we're offering him and I'm pretty sure the amount of money that they're offering him is the highest payday of his boxing career. Now, I think for that Pacquiao fight, if he would have signed off for that Pacquiao fight, at that moment, that would have been the highest payday of his boxing career. These are facts, not fiction. That would have been the highest payday of his boxing career because Bob Earl guaranteed him from three to five million dollars. From three to five million dollars, depending on the opponent. And the Pacquiao, uh, the Pacquiao um, investors were offering him, they, they had a pool of $50 million. A pool of $50 million. Pacquiao wanted 40 Terrence Crawford was going to get 10 out of that pool. That, at the moment, would have been his biggest payday. Now, if, if you were going to get 10 to fight somebody like Manny Pacquiao, super duper famous, probably way more famous than Earl Spence will ever be, I don't care what people say, Manny Pacquiao, still to this day, way more famous than Earl Spence will ever be. If you were going to get 10 to fight Pacquiao, why wouldn't you accept 10 to fight Earl Spence? I don't understand that. And, and, and I'm pretty sure Earl Spence is not going to get anywhere near... 40 he might get somewhere around 25 or 30 uh, but i doubt he gets near that 40 million dollar mark if he does then man he's got some he's got some investors that believe in him <laughs> uh and and the fact of the matter is you know earl spence because of the weight division and this is what terrence crawford fanboys don't understand because of the division you're in because of the division you're in because of the division you're in and because of the fact that earl spence at the moment is running that division based off the resume based off the beating champions based off the fact he's the one walking around with with three or four title belts wrapped around himself based off the fact that he's the actual draw at the moment if you, if you put both of them in the ring together who's drawing the fans in it's earl spence jr not terrence crawford terrence crawford comes with his own built-in fan base yes but he's not the one drawing in the majority of the fans if you put them in a stadium the majority of if and they sell uh, let's say the stadium fits a hundred thousand seventy five thousand of those people came to see Earl Spence jr. Not Terrence Crawford now. He might have twenty five thousand out of that hundred thousand, but that's only twenty five That's only a twenty five percent And Earl Spence is carrying the fight you put it on pay-per-view if 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 a hundred and fifty thousand people buy the fight I'll give you a high end and say 30,000 of those are Terrence Crawford fans. But that still leaves 120,000 fans who tuned in to watch Earl Spence. 
why would he give up any leeway on the purse? Why would he give up any leeway on the pur on the purse just to get Terrence Crawford in the ring, who only has one welterweight title, who's only had one welterweight title fight? I'll repeat that again. Who's only had one welterweight title fight? And, and let me give you another fact. Even Jeff Horn had two welterweight title fights. <laughs> I'll repeat that again. Even Jeff Horn had two welterweight title fights. There was Manny Pacquiao who he robbed and cheated and elbowed and headbutted to death. And then he fought Terrence Crawford. So his welterweight resume is better than Terrence Crawford's welterweight resume. Which makes absolutely no sense in the world. But that man had two welterweight title fights. Terrence Crawford's only had one welterweight title fight. One. Now, one more fact before I get ready to get out of here. Because it's dragging on a little bit. And this train is becoming a little nerve-wracking. But... Terrence Crawford had a golden opportunity before he signed that Sean Porter fight. Earl Spence was uh, in negotiations to fight Manny Pacquiao at the time. And then the Manny Pacquiao fight got announced. Ugas was sitting out there without an opponent at that point. Was sitting out there without an opponent. And I did several videos asking the question, why isn't Terrence Crawford going after Ugas? That guy, if he beats that guy, it gives him all type of credibility. It gives him all type of... Um, it gives him uh, not only another title belt, but it gives him all type of credibility if he beats him. Then you know it makes the fight even at that point between him and Earl Spence. You got two titles. You got two titles. You know he can command a higher purse. There has to be a reason why Terrence Crawford didn't face off with Ugas. And people keep saying, well, uh, uh, Earl, well, Ter Earl Spence petitioned this and Earl Spence did that. No, he didn't because Earl Spence was supposed to fight Pacquiao. He was supposed to fight Pacquiao and, and Terrence Crawford hadn't signed that Sean Porter fight yet. He hadn't signed up for that fight yet. So he had a, he had a golden opportunity to go and fight and beat Ugas, which he just threw to the side and people's excuse for why he did that is going to be, well, Ugas is on PBC and Terrence Crawford was on uh, top rank at the time. Well, that didn't stop him from fighting Sean Porter, did it? Who was a PBC fighter. It didn't stop him from, from fighting Sean Porter, who is a PBC fighter. So that whole argument made no sense to me in the first place. And it, it, So, to bring it to a close, it's got to be fact. It's got to be fact and truthful. When you come on my channel, because if you're not using facts and you're not being truthful, I'm gonna cuss you out. I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna call you all kind of names. I might block you. You're gonna get embarrassed because I'm gonna hit you with the facts and the truth, and you're just gonna look foolish at the end of the day. Because I got actual boxing fans on my channel, people who are knowledgeable in the sport, and they'll worry you out just as bad as I'll worry you out with the facts, with the facts, with the facts with the facts so be factional not fictional and be truthful not a fanboy it's your boy cardinal red i think that's it for now man cardinal red on all social media platforms facebook instagram youtubes uh if you want to get at me man my uh, my gmail is um cardinal red 1984 at gmail.com you can drop me a line on there if you want to uh, you know if you got something you want to send me or something hit me up on there and let me know and then I'll send you a way to send that to me or uh, if you got any information you want to share that you don't want to share on YouTube definitely hit me up on my Gmail or on one of my other social media platforms and I'll definitely get back to you. I'm sorry about the background noise, man. I know it's annoying. It seems like everywhere I try to go and get a little quiet time, it's either some kids playing or a train coming or a plane coming. So it's your boy Cardinal Red, and we are out of here.